This is a tripod broadcast. It's Farmcast here on Give That Some Thought. Well, let's start recording, so... We just did. Okay, cool. I think this is a key show to listen to because it's... It's it's uh, it's all about emotional masturbation. <laughs> journalistic integrity. It encapsulates everything that we're about. And I'm sorry. Now, <laughs> give that some thought. Yeah. With Addison... I can't be mad at you. You got a haircut. And Matt. I would recommend that you stop listening right now. <laughs> Everything's battery powered. Yeah, I was in, All the, of it. in, in the market for a, a lawnmower. Mm-hmm. I still am. You get a battery powered lawnmower? No, I, like to get a, a gas one, the cheapest gas one was like 270 bucks. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, fine. The cheapest, like electric or like the electric ones are like 200. Yeah. And the cheapest gas is like 270. Mm-hmm. And then the next one is 500. Yeah. Or 400, yeah. something like that. Right. And you know, buying that cheapest one, you're going to get one, you have, one season. You have basically. like five choices of electrics that are all around $300. Yeah. Yeah. Like in, like priced. You think low. that's it? You think it's because it's cheaper to do, to like to produce gas powered stuff? Because I've, so uh, her parents got me a circular saw, DeWalt circular saw that uses a 20 volt battery. Mm-hmm. And DeWalt is like all these other guys, Milwaukee, Ryobi, all, all these guys, they have their proprietary, um, rechargeable battery Mm -hmm. and then a recharger for it and then one pack slaps on everything which like for my impact driver and my and my circular saw is kind of nice because swap batteries charge this one charge that one you know for whatever projects i got going on um but i didn't realize they were doing really everything until i was at home depot and i really wanted to buy it this this was actually a moment it was a couple weeks ago uh we had to go to home depot to get some plants or whatever and i'm standing there while she's doing whatever and I lo- I'm looking around, and we were right by the pressure washers, and I'm, and I'm like, because I think a pressure washer would be really neat to have. Yeah. You'd use it for the house, use it for the cars, use it for, I mean, you use it for all kinds of stuff. And apparently, DeWalt makes one that you just slap this 20-volt battery on, that you slap on everything. Mm-hmm. It's like 150 bucks, and it's only 200 PSI. Like, it's not the full pressure washer, obviously. And then you just plug a hose into it, and, and you have a battery-operated pressure washer. And I stood there in Home Depot, and I was like, I really really want to buy that and then i was like this is this is the single most dad moment i've ever had is standing in this home depot and lusting after a power tool <laughs> well eventually you know you're i mean you're there you know dude i was thinking about this on the way out here remember 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 when we used to work at applebee's yeah i do <laughs> I, re- I remember i remember So this is, <laughs> this is a combination. Oh, uh, this is another thing that happened in these two weeks that we took off. Uh, out of nowhere, our landlord sent us a text. Oh yeah, you mentioned this. Yeah, out of, out of, that's out why of, we canceled. That's why we canceled last week. It may have been. We yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, on um, because we were, uh, I think we bumped it to Thursday night. Yeah, for various reasons. Well, I think you bumped it, and then they texted me, and I was like, screw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, I, I can't. Well, so they texted, landlord texts out, out of nowhere, texts and says, hey, tomorrow at noon, um, we have an insurance inspection, and we'll be walking through the house. That's something that, though, like, they, that's not necessarily, like, on them. Like, it could it's be, not, it could no. be something that, like, a couple days ahead yeah. of time, yeah. they just maybe didn't see the email or something. Well, what was funny is the guy that notified us was in fact notified several days before and was supposed to tell us. And the only reason he did it is because randomly we had a question about the propane bill because it got mixed up clearly and we're not sure. And so my wife had to reach out to him and say, Hey, we're not sure about this. Blah, blah. And, and he was like, Oh, I forgot to mention <laughs> tomorrow at noon, we're doing this insurance inspection. We're walking through. And I mean, I have a wife, I have two kids. I have, an abundance of poultry. <laughs> so, so weapon dr- weaponry you need to hide. Weaponry, drugs. It just, Ooh, yeah. I mean, it, it it's it it seriously alleged, like, alleged drugs. Alleged drugs. That's I have a license. I have a, I have a card. Alleged weaponry. <laughs> yeah, alleged weaponry. That's right. Um, but well, since then I've lost them all in a boating accident. But so we we my condolences exactly we furiously clean and i did something that i never thought i was going to do I, I i've heard it stories like this i think you have stories like this but i found weed i was going through 
I know. I know. I'm, I was going through. I'm cleaning up my desk. I'm throwing out all these old jars, all this just, you know, junk everywhere, just whatever. And then I pull up this one weed jar. I'm getting ready to toss it in the garbage. I'm like, oh, there's something in there. Open it up. There's like three nugs in there. <laughs> it's like a gram and a half of weed. I was like, bro. I told my wife, I was like, babe, I found weed. I've heard stories of this. I never thought it would happen to me. <laughs> so, so what we're smoking here, <laughs> because I'm actually way out of flour, is this is like the last of three different strains, including one that I found that has been there for at least two months, if not yeah. more. So yeah, this, this is this, um, this may kill us. I don't know. No, this is that that's actually really really smooth. Mm. Well, it, like I said, it's three different strains, three different potencies, three different you know. So we may, uh, who knows? We may ride the comet. All right, all right. I'm I'm ready. Um. Yeah. So surprise inspection. We didn't record last week. And um, I did open line Friday, but I haven't decided if I'm going to post it. Yeah. I, I didn't listen. <coughs> I don't blame you. But it was basically my mom ripping Aaron from, uh, I have the high ground, front of the show, uh, ripping Aaron a new asshole over Calvinism for, for about an hour. <laughs> it, which was funny because at a certain point I was like, bro, she's like worse than I am. Like this is, this is a can of worms you do not want to get into with her. So I had a pretty fun weekend. Yeah? Calvin Bros BTFO'd? Oh, yeah, you told me. Yeah, why don't no, you get into that? Oh, no. so um, <laughs> my brother got married over the weekend. No Calvin Bros in sight. Which was, which was a good time. It was a good day. Everybody had a good time. Um, I, I, I doubt my family's going to listen to this. Mm. Let's hope aside not. From, Anything? Aside from Sam. Good and, kid. Good man. Good. There you go. Yeah. Um, how old is he now? Twenty-seven, I think. Oh my, time flies. No, he's he's getting up there. That hairline is every day, you know, creeping back. Uh, I have a big. If you notice, I've, I've got like a big patch of gray back here. I haven't noticed. There's. Okay, yeah, I see it faintly. Yeah, yeah. My wife loves it. She's like, she's like, you're so distinguished. She's like, I can't wait until you're fully gray. She said that to me the other day. I can't wait until you're fully gray. And I was like, well, with any luck, I'll look like Roger Sterling. And she was like, I know you will. <laughs> I was like, Calm down there, Tiger. Did you tell her, keep keep up with your bullshit, woman. Yeah, it'll exactly. Be, it'll be, be great think. tomorrow. No, man. Her bullshit her bullshit has been a, a, a very dull roar lately. She's just she's just knocking it out of the park, man. She she's the glue that holds the Dodd family poultry farm together. Truly. Which is why I <laughs> <laughs> so they've added a rabbit yeah i don't know oh, okay yeah well because we've talked about it before okay because you can raise rabbits because their their droppings are very good for the garden all right they're basically fertilizer and you don't need chicken can be too but you should really let it wait or you know bury it in a certain way because of all the nitrogen in it uh as opposed to rabbit droppings where it's like hey they poop you put it right in the garden and you it's just it's like a boost for your garden and so we've talked about it before. And then the other day she texts me and, you know, and she's like, you know, can I get a, can I get a, a, a rabbit? And I'm like, so we, are we, we be to be raising for food or like what's, cause people do that too. And she's like, she, mm. she asked your permission before buying a pet. Oh yeah. hundred percent. My man. <laughs> Bro. She knows better than that. I'm not going to bring a pet. That is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She might be able to get away with that with poultry just because I'm such a huge fan. And actually, I'm the one that's done that more than she has. Showed up with new birds and been like, hey, so <laughs> we got to find a place for these to sleep. Let, let me phrase it a different way. Maybe she asked your permission before making an impulse purchase. Well, not necessarily impulse, but yes. Okay. But I, 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 I said yes. And the kids are obsessed with this thing. man. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a male or female? Female. Okay, good. Males can be like super aggressive. Oh, can they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I had um a good friend of mine. Um, well, you know, Jason, my former roommate. Him and his brother, they had rabbits growing up. Ah, uh, and um, that explains a lot. No, I'm just... Chris had a rabbit, and uh, Mr. Fluffikins mm. was the rabbit's name. Mm. And I remember they used to put it was a it was a boy rabbit, and it would get like super aggressive sometimes. Yeah, 
like if you'd be over their house like playing video games and it would like you come into the, the bedroom to play some PlayStation and it sees you and just like, shitting starts, a brick. like like chewing at the cage trying to attack you. Mm, yeah. Because you're a stranger. Yeah. Um but I remember like they 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 would put it on a skateboard and like roll the skateboard down the street <laughs> with the rabbit on top. And it was like Well anyway. You know. It's what you do when you're you're 13 years old and you have a pet rabbit. She's a big girl, though. She's a big girl, and um, they they can get real big. Yeah, real big. And my wife's already like, gotta save the droppings. <laughs> we started getting strawberries, by the way. Ooh, nice, dude. They're delicious. They're so good. How big? D- uh, you know, not crazy, but mm-hmm. decent size. Not the really so tiny ones. The longer you leave them on the vine, yeah, the more they're going to, um, the the less sweet they're going to be. Yeah. But you leave them on for an extra day or two. Yeah. You get twice the amount of strawberry. Yeah. So so strawberries are coming in. What else is coming in? Um I'm not sure. There are potatoes growing everywhere, but I think they still have quite some time. It's farm cast here on Give That Some Thought. We, We're talking farm chickens. Cast. We're talking <laughs> rabbits. It's true. No, she texted me the other day. Get this. Get th- you'll love this. You'll love this. She texted me the other day because we got we got ten new quail. Uh, which I mentioned last time, so they're not new, new, super new. Yeah, but we get we get ten quail to start to quail again. And are you egging them or are you meeting them? Egg. Okay. They're not really worth eating. There's not unless unless you're trying to do like a specific quail dish. Yeah. You know, because you got to stuff. There's hardly any meat on them. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. Um. No, the meat chicken. The meat chickens have moved on to Chris and Sarah's, which is oh god. A sigh of relief, dude. A collective sigh of relief. They were the biggest pain in my ass. I'm telling you, like, n- and next it gets a learning process. But next time we'll be way more prepared. We were not prepared, and <laughs> <clears throat> we weren't really repair- prepared for how fast they grow. Because pretty much just everywhere we put them, you know, within two weeks they were uh, essentially they didn't always get moved this quickly, but essentially had had outgrown it. Um they're just a nightmare. And but they they've moved on to Chris and Sarah's. We got these new quail and we hatched 13 quail eggs in our incubator. Okay. And she tells me the other day, she says, "I think that we should hatch a bunch of quail, raise them to the point where they can be, you know, without a heat lamp and all that." Mhm. And then separate them up into flocks and give them to people, build cages, and give th- someone just everything they would need to just be raising quail. That's a fucking good idea. Isn't it? You guys should do that. We are. We, it's a plan. It's, we're doing it right now. <laughs> because. I know, man. And Yeah, people. Yeah. You're you two are not alone in the homesteading. I'm good. Uh, yeah, we, I think it may pretty much be done. Yeah, we're done with that. Know. It's done. In the homesteading, like urban farming. Yeah, because I mean, even though you guys are on private land that's secluded. Yeah, and it feels you know and rented. Sadly, yeah, you, sucks. You're but... still right in the middle of a metropolis. Yeah, yeah, five minutes away. You know, I mean, from strip mall hell. Yeah, no, I know, dude. It's, it's, uh, dude. And believe me, I see it creeping in, bro. I go to those gas stations up there in the valley and I'm like, mm-hmm. who let the, there's a tranny. Okay. There's, yeah. Side, quick sidebar for tranny cast. First off, there's, I was the one who's supposed <laughs> to fucking open tranny cast. Okay. It's true. I'm not, sorry. Not you. But, well, there's something wrong with my microphone right now. I don't know what it is. Do you have me on a special, like, mute if I'm away? I don't think so. I I just feel like I'm. It's I'm not. Off. It's not any more than normal. Okay. I always forget where everything is when I haven't done it in a while. That's what she said. See, that's. I don't what, know. That, that's that's that entirely might... without it. But see, okay. see all that background noise we added in. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Do it. What? I'll just try to stay on. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I was supposed to open training cast, but whatever. Just tell me about the story at the gas station with, <laughs> when you saw somebody who just. Wanted to feel good in their own skin. <laughs> I thought my power tool analogy was very apt from before we got on mic. Uh huh. You know the the electric revolution that we see all everything's electric. Sure. Power tools. 
it's just like a tranny. It's like, I want to be a power tool. <laughs> it's like, but you have a cock. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> it's a problem. Um, no, there's a tranny at our local, the, the closest gas station to my house. Mm-hmm. There, is a, there is a man who, um, I, I, you know, I'm not sure his story, <laughs> to be frank, but it, it would appear that he is having difficulty understanding his own sexuality. Would be my nicest. That's is politically correct. I mean, he dresses like a girl, and and there's some nail polish, and generally some lipstick, and occasionally some makeup. You know. Yeah. I yeah. haven't been in there for several months because I did see him there, and I'm like, fuck that. I'll go to every other gas station in the area. But it's the one with the emos too. So it's like you know, emos. Is, I know it's it's, kinda, <laughs> it's kind of garbage. Yeah, for the price it is. Yeah. <laughs> but they do, you can, so they have to-go pizzas, you know, the same size as, like, Quick Trip does, mm-hmm. but they're emos. So, yeah, you, you roll in there at, like, 12.35 on a Tuesday, and there's there's at least 10 Mexicans from the local lawn crew kit <laughs> with one to two to three emos pizzas each. Of these many, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a thing. It's. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if that's your jam, that's your jam, whatever. Anyways, back to Farmcast. Yeah, the quail thing. We want to raise them, build build cage. You know, have the whole process worked out. Yeah, give it give it to them. So then you would just deliver it. Yeah, show them. I mean that that should be part of it too. Yeah, like we will show you. And we're the consulting kind of. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not only you're gonna buy our kit, but also you consulting comes along with it. <laughs> like we will train you. Well, she wants to do this for free. No. But no. Maybe maybe I'll just say, you know, now for anybody that listens and that this happens to, you know, I mean, I have PayPal. It's it's just, I'm just it's, saying. <laughs> number, how, mu- how much are you going to spend on these cages to build them on well, the heads every, and stuff? Everything everything we've we've built has been for free, but for like, you know, hinges and screws. Okay, but but now you want to do it like. We just we just want to do one or two. I mean, we're not, we're not trying to go crazy here. Oh, shit. Like, I'm no, I'm thinking like this is a business model, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Scale it out. And, yeah. Yeah. N- you start advertising on specific. If, if, if I mean, if I had land, I, you know, you do, I'm, you, do, you do targeted I'm advertising land. on Facebook to people who live in Wentzville. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And Forestell. Yeah. And Troy. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're not wrong. You, that would be a legit business. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And and something that people you probably couldn't do it on Facebook, live animals, maybe yeah yeah yeah. But but even still, I mean, they'll target those areas, and that's yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, and the dumb bitch wants to give it away for free, uh, <laughs> like like three hundred <laughs> bucks. You get this kit. We come to your house. We install it. We show you how to use it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then explain the whole concept behind moving it and predators yeah. and mm-hmm. you know how to handle that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's and then true. and then you would be like like you could sell supplemental kits. Yeah, like five more chickens. Yeah, quail. You know. Yeah, or quail or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's true. And and you know more and more people I think ha- you know have an understanding because there's 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 sort of like bullshit on all fronts. You know, if you look at just the whole picture. And I think more and more people are starting to realize, oh, oh wait a second, like this is this is <laughs> this can't end well. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, and I think there, there's eschatological consequences <laughs> at the end of the whole thing. But all that aside, even if there's not, like this is not this is we can't keep doing this. Yeah, and and I think people are realizing that oh, you know, the, the grocery store might not always be open. Quite frankly, yeah, the world is is yeah. is um it's deteriorating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. The out- outlook not good. Um, <laughs> actually, it was. Having, go, there's your update. Not good is our <laughs> having a conversation with two thumbs uh, down right now with a uh, coworker earlier today about just how not to starve in an apocalypse. No, just the state yeah. of the world. Yeah, and um, you know, she mentioned like who would want to bring a kid into this world mm. as fucked up as it is. I was like, that's it's, it's a it's a popular. It's not the point moniker. Like, the point is, the world is fucked up. Guess what? The world has always been fucked up. Mm-hmm. It's always been fucked up. Mm-hmm. There are some particularly grave threats now, to be granted. But Yes, but, things have accelerated yeah. in this current period of time, but the world has always kind of been the way it is. Yeah. Like, 
we're one always, mass deterioration we, after another. Ninety percent of the time, we've been we're almost always ruled by psychopaths. <laughs> yeah, why is that? Okay. Principalities and powers. Children are sacrificed. <laughs> well, we're there, uh, literally and and symbolically. Yeah. <laughs> It, pe- people suffer. The poor are poor. Black people get up to nonsense. Certain tribes <laughs> are parasites. <laughs> and the world has always kind of been the, the way it is. But the more but, you notice. But to say, I want to give up on perpetuating the good I can do in the world, which... Yeah. The the best way to do your life is to leave the world in a better state than you left. Have a net positive, yeah, over the course of your life, yeah. We I think we can all agree on that, no matter our religious background, mm. right? And it that's totally in line with Christianity. No, no, you you do good to other people, right? Yeah. So, using that metric, um, like having a child, raising them up. To be a good person who also leaves a net positive yeah. on the world, that's a very good investment. That's a good thing to do. So so just to say that the world's fucked up, I don't know if I, I why would you want to bring a kid in this world? I was very much like, no. Yeah, it's the opposite. Why would you why would you not want to? It's the exact opposite. Yeah. If 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 everybody else is insane. Mm-hmm. What do you want to be? And you can teach a few. You can you can grow and raise a few more people who aren't insane. <laughs> yeah, or, and you don't buy it all. Yeah, yeah. No, precisely. Then you're you're doing your part. That's exactly what you need to do. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, ten percent of the population is completely batshit, bonkers, insane. <laughs> that high now? Wow. I think last time with this analogy, you said about ten percent of that five percent. Yeah. Is really really good at gain, gaining power and influence. Mm, yeah, and it makes the other eighty percent, yeah, ninety percent, think that that batshit bonkers, totally insane ten percent mm. represents everyone. Yeah, and it fucking doesn't. Yeah, if you want to, we can get into. <laughs> if we're done with Farmcast, the various tribes, or oh no, back to the, back to the wedding. Farmcast is pretty much done. I mean, okay, we have a bunny. Uh, we're going to start doing quail kits. I don't know. Hopefully she didn't want me to like spoil that or, you know, <laughs> hold off your request. It's an idea, you know? I, I mean, it's, I mean, there's going to be some time and effort involved in our part to do this, you know? So, th- I mean, the people we really have two people, at least right now, you know, in mind that we want to do it with. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll cut this out, but we really are hoping that. Nice. nice. Yeah. I think it'd be a really pl- really good gesture to bless. Once that. you once you convince your wife it's a bad idea to do it for free. <laughs> I would very much like to star. But see, this is a, this is proof that there's no Jew in her. Yeah, that's a good thing. Think about it. I, I, I never have to do the Ancestry.com thing. No Ashkenazi. She wants to give stuff away for free, but I problem yeah. solved. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. No, but I would very much like to star in a like Corny Facebook ad <laughs> as a co- dressed up as a quail. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like a used used car salesman vibes. Yes, 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 yes very much so. And um, what what do you call it? Quail? What? What was the? It was QQ? Quail kit? Quail kit? <laughs> QK? Quail kit? Yeah, like quailkit.com. Yeah. It'd be perfect. It'd be beautiful. I'll have to see if that's registered. <laughs> I'll have to add that to my cash. I've got a little, you know, are domains still investments? Probably not with the way things are. Yeah. Uh, but I have a couple. I have a couple that, you know, one I should really try and sell. It's a really good cannabis domain. Um, But I, I own a handful of cannabis domains. And, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they're investments or not. I should probably try and sell them. But I can't, the problem is I can't, it, it's really painful to interact with 90% of the people in the cannabis community. <laughs> yeah. Cause they're all fucking stoned. It's well, yeah, but there's a lot of just, it's just, it just makes your blood boil because they're also, I would say moderate leftists for the most yes, part. Yes, Precisely. And there's a, a certain 
entitlement that comes along with that. A little bit, yeah. I think so. Yeah. So in, in dealing with, like, if I, honestly, we've, um, one of the things that happened. You want to do some new edibles, by the way? I, I, I have access to D9, like, distill it and nano. We'll talk. Okay. So we we haven't talked for two weeks, but yeah, a lot's happened. I did a Lucky Dog dinner, which I, yeah. I kind of want to talk about. Damn. I did the um what, the, what, what, what damn what? no I just I want to respect your your heart Matt has a heart out and so oh no it's all good but it's it has good. been two weeks it has been two weeks but I did the lucky dog dinner which was I was going to talk about that's I was going to ask you about that um it looked badass man I guess uh, Chef Philip posted it on Instagram that's yeah. why I was that picture yeah. my uh, my prep cook quit oh fun yep her last day is next is next Saturday yeah. Was, it, was this due to excessive clotting or? No, it was due to she got a position like literally down the block um, at a place where she at a place where she is the um, the dessert chef. Oh, okay. Yeah, making more than four dollars more an hour. Uh and she has the title chef. Hmm. So. <laughs> It's a, it's a it's an upward career move. Yeah, you know, for sure. So my job is getting a lot harder here. A lot in a more bit. prep. Yeah, but I have a cover for that. But we were looking at people, like okay, old people we talked to last year, and then said kind of no, I don't think it's going to be a good fit. Let's talk to them again and see if okay, maybe situations now, change or whatever. Yeah, because we're desperate. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys that was brought up was this guy. Um who currently works at Tompkins. Mm. And we, we talked about him because he had applied at the rack house mm. and they trying to do both. Well, at the, at, at one point he was, when, when he did that, he was working at olive and Oak full time mm. and then was going to apply for the rack house part time. Mm. Motherfucker wanted, so he's a crackhead. <laughs> he wanted $23 an hour mm. a year ago mm -hmm. to be a line cook because he said, well, I have a full-time job already. This would be a part-time job on top of it. So I would consider that overtime work. <laughs> so I would need overtime pay. Uh, that's incredible. I, that's amazing. But He, is he one actually of, said that. Yes. He is one of these... <laughs> Over Far leftist, Antifa. Uh huh. <coughs> Jobs will respect me. Early twenty, early mid twenties. Is he a noodle boy? He uh, he's very much a noodle boy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I actually when he sent that, I uh, I emojied, laughed <laughs> back at yeah. him. Yeah. And then I haven't responded since. Yeah. But he was his name was brought up, and I was like, no, no fucking way. Yeah, I am not letting that mentality into my kitchen, into the kitchen, because it fucking corrupts. Yeah, and just like just like John always says on on No Agenda, mm -hmm. don't let these people into your company. Yeah, absolutely not. Because all they do is bitch and moan about everything, and gum up the works for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's a poison, man. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's a it's a poison mentality. My, my brother and I were talking about that. We knew a guy who was very much like that in in. Uh, and Esther, if she's listening, will probably know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> in in the St. Louis market in the Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Hard leftist Jew. Mm. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. And and it's it, it, everywhere we went. It's just, you know, here's this idea of communism and, you know, a bur Bernie bro, you know, a thousand percent. It's just a poisonous attitude. Yeah. It's a poisonous attitude. And I watched that happen at like three plus stores in the area who hired this fucking guy. And guess what? It didn't work out for a variety mm -hmm. of reasons. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Poisonous so, Jews, folks. Watch out for poisonous Jews. That's all we're saying. So <laughs> did the uh, the farm dinner. Yeah. Um, Stone soup. We can have. Yeah, we can have a go. Uh, Lucky Dog Farm. Yeah. Um, so the concept was five courses. Five chefs who use Lucky Dog Farm for their produce and various things. It's a great idea. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, Lucky Dog's idea? 
Yes, Ryan and Darlene from Lucky Dog Farm. You yeah. can find them uh, there in Wentzville. Yeah. Um, you can find them on Facebook, Lucky Dog Farm. You still mean to reach out to them and go out there and all that. They, but... dude, it's a fantastic or uh, a fantastic operation. Yeah. They, they're they are good, salt of the earth people. Yeah. Very much, um, very very much, just like they just want to enjoy life and let other people enjoy life. Yeah. It's a beautiful mission. Um, he but is, do they do quail kits? <laughs> he is definitely, um, he is woke. Yeah. I mean, like, he's a farmer. Of course he is. So, Ryan, we, we've had talks before about COVID mm. he, from the very get go. Like, yeah. When I would be like, oh, he's like, oh, you got your mask on. I'm like, yeah, it was fucking bullshit. And he's like, dude, I'm telling you, let me tell you. Okay. The CDC said this last week. Yeah. And now like, they're saying it this week. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, he was on the level the whole time i'm yeah. like okay this Must guy be on telegram <laughs> probably like this guy he knows where it's at yeah um but then yeah so his wife uh i remember that we had did a meeting out there before we were, we were when we were planning it and his wife um their young son was there probably like two two and a half yeah and like halfway through the meeting the son is sitting in her lap and starts pulling like at her shirt yeah and she like turns around and starts breastfe- breastfeeding him, and and we're like, okay, act natural, basically <laughs> everybody in the group. But but that's the kind of people they are. They're like they're just they homeschool. I had my finger on. Don't be rude, but I didn't need it. You did great. They're I'm home, so proud they, of us. They homeschool. They have a daughter, and she's like five six. Yeah. But so and they're farmers. They do. They have a couple hundred chickens, I think. Yeah. At least a hundred chickens. They do meat with them. Um. No, they don't. Are they, they, are they, they free eggs. range or are they, how are they doing? They're them? free range. And they're layers? Yeah. Nice. What yeah. do they feed them? Do they, let them, do they give them compost? I don't know. They got to figure out how to do the composting thing, man. I'm Chickens sure they will literally compost. Are. I'm you. sure they are. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's they nuts. also, they also have eight greenhouses. Oh yeah. Where they grow wow. vegetables. That's nuts. I'm, I'm getting romaine lettuce from eight them tomorrow. greenhouses. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, you hear that, babe? I've been telling you to reach out. <laughs> <laughs> they have hogs. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Nice. Um they have a couple dogs. Yeah. Um what else do they have? That sounds like my that's my wife's cousin. I'd be remiss, remiss if I didn't mention that. Spring Creek Farm. And you you're welcome to look them up. Great people. Uh but yeah, that that's that's my wife's cousin and they do that down in Salem. They've got hogs, sheep, chicken they do meat chickens. I think they're doing layers now. Um they used to buy eggs to then sell at Tower Grove. And then they decided they were like, well, this is dumb. Uh, you know, we should do our own layers. I, th- I think, you know, I think Mer- Meredith was <laughs> kind of telling her that, like, why are you buying it? Like, just do the chickens. <laughs> like, yeah. And then you have more for yourself and everything else and, you know, whatever else. Anyways. Um, so I think, I think they're doing that. What else do they do? They do hogs as well. And they do, they do beef. They do a ton of beef. Nice. Um, I know. It's cheap. Yeah. They do. Lucky Dog does mostly pork. <laughs> pork sausage with their porks ah yeah um and then they also have like other suppliers yeah farms that are further out mm-hmm. that can't get the no so spring creek's chorizo is top notch it's an excellent recipe like people will drive 15 20 minutes to go get farm fresh eggs yeah that they can post up about on instagram <laughs> but they won't go an hour and a half to do it yeah so some of these farms that are more central missouri Mm -hmm. an hour down 70 you know they'll sell their stuff to a like a place like lucky dog yeah no absolutely it's a network in yeah yeah there's a lot of guys that do that the farm the farm that we drive to to get uh um we go once a week to go pick up raw cow's milk unpasteurized straight from the cow yeah um, from a farm out in, it's way out in Winsville somewhere. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, I think they're doing chickens and, and she said they only have, they're only using five acres and they're doing all that and they're selling milk and people, people just line up to come get it, man. I would say that lucky, like my dog, wife was lucky to get a spot. <laughs> like lucky dog farm is maybe 10 acres. Yeah. Yeah. Probably about 10. Yeah. But I think a lot of that land is not used. Yeah. They have, they're right next door to somebody who has one of those McMansions. Mm. And they have probably three acres 
hmm. of just lawn Ooh. that bor- that borders Lucky Dog Farm. Uh, and that lawn goes all the way from the easement, the street, for three acres. In, it's, it's about the size of a football field. Yeah. A little bit bigger. Yeah. And it goes all the way up into their woods, and it's all the way up on their property line. And I'm, I was, I was, when I was there, I was looking at it, I was like, this is just lawn. Yeah. There was like a fake deer target yeah. set up yeah. in the middle of it. Like, okay, this person is not, they're not doing anything with this. No, not at all. All it is is labor. There's a lot of that you, you have, have to, to drive through to get to the farm we go to to pick up that milk on Winswell. Yeah, it's nuts. It's like you see these places and it's like, man, that looks amazing. And you dumped so many chemicals on your lawn. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, and it's like, and, imagine what, what the next door neighbors could be doing with that lawn. Yeah. Yeah. You or know? or the people themselves. Yeah, Like, true. I respect, because, so, you know, you, the farther out you get, because you go down 109, you'll see some of this, which we always do to go to, you know, Kristen's and Sarah's and all that. And if you have a big thing, you know, big, big, big house, big, big stacked up house, and you're doing something with the land... Cow, anything, even if it's just one thing, because you'll see some of those where you know all they have is like eight or ten cows. But it's like, okay, I can respect that. Yeah. But the whole like manicure this down to look a certain way when you're out and you have that much space, it's disrespectful, man. Yeah. Highly disrespectful. I mean, even if you just let it go to weeds. Yeah. Because, but that's better for the environment. Yeah. No. Okay. Dumping it on and cutting yeah, exactly. it and having one kind of grass in there. You've got. You've that's got literally bad for the environment. You got more bugs. You got more worms. You got more rabbits. You got yeah. more everything. 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 The whole Mice. thing. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you have to let it run wild or whatever. But you know. Yeah. The whole manicured lawns. No, they're not good for the environment. But. But what is good for the environment? Mm. Is trainings? Ryan oh. and Darlene Smith <laughs> at Lucky Dog Farms. Great people. farm. They're, they're, they're tremendous people. I fucking yeah. love them. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting some sweet peas from them tomorrow. Nice. Some sugar snap peas. Oh, my, oh my God, dude. <laughs> so, five chefs, five restaurants, five courses. All from Lucky Dog. Featuring Lucky Dog. <laughs> what a great idea, man. That was the most fun I've had in... Ages? Since, well, definitely since... um. Mega cast. Yeah. The past mega cast. <laughs> but probably since like Christmas. Yeah. Um because it was just it was j- What'd you do? I did course one. Okay. So an introduction. So everybody met. Let me guess, you did a pea soup. No. <laughs> so what happened was two weeks before we were supposed to do it. Mm. St. Charles County showed up at Lucky Duck Farm. Oh, how nice of them. The, uh, um, what, what is it, coding inspector or whatever? Oh, whoever. Rat poop inspectors. Yeah. A couple of them mm. showed up at Lucky Duck Farm. And they said, We're, we heard you're supposed to do this wine dinner. You can't do that without a commercial kitchen. Even though it's a catered event. Really? And they explained that it was a catered event, and they no, still no, didn't... No, 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 no. I don't think that Ryan really understood, like, all the rules and stuff with food service. Yeah. That for catered events at a location... Yeah. As long as it is coming... You're bringing the food in. ...from a licensed kitchen... Right. It is fine. Yeah. Because it falls under commissary rules. Yeah. You can prepare food one place that is set up to prepare food, specifically, and then serve it at another place, and it's legal. Yeah. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. He, he, because he's a farmer. Yeah. And he's not thinking in those terms. He then said, okay, St. Charles is putting the pressure on me. We need to do it somewhere else. Hmm. So it got moved to, um, Stone Soup Cottage. Yeah. Which is a, um, one of the top restaurants in St. Louis. Yeah. It's right down the road from us in Cottleville. Um, best restaurant in St. Louis. Several multiple, times over. Multiple times. Yeah. Um, multiple publications. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, a wait list that's three months long. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Still, we're charging 200 bucks. Yeah. Per person for this thing. 
Wow. So anyway, um, yeah, apparently, so they have this little stand mm-hmm. at Lucky Dog Farm, which is like a little house. Mm. And they have coolers and freezers and refrigerators in there with the little tiny front desk with mm. cash, old timey cash register. Yeah. Set up like general store. And on the weekends, they sell stuff out of that store. Yeah. St. Charles County came, said, nope, that's illegal. God. You can't, you can't do it because this building isn't built to code. Right. And it hasn't been inspected. Yeah. yeah. And plans, plans were not submitted to the city to build this structure. Yep. So then. However, all is not lost. You can still do your Saturday sale where mm. you sell other people's stuff from other farms and your stuff. Yeah. You can sell eggs by the dozen. That's fine. But you have to do it under a tent, 10 feet in front of the building you have that's climate controlled with refrigeration. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is the racket, man. Like, this is, you know. So it's what this is, <laughs> they are about five minutes drive from strip mall. Yeah. You know, um, like we are a, a little bulge that has grown up in went like it's it's past Wentzville. Yeah. But a little bulge that has grown up around around Highway 70. Mm-hmm. That's how it starts. Yes, it is. 20 years ago, that was O'Fallon. Yep. Yeah, precisely. I tell my wife that. All the time. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. she'll be looking at these places on Zillow, and I'm like, nah, it's right on the highway. Yep. As soon as that exit gets a gas station, fucked. Yep. Like, I'm, gas, I'm sorry, a, but... A, as soon as it gets a quick trip and a McDonald's... You're done. Nope. You're yeah. done. Yeah. And you, and the nail in the coffin is a Walmart. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Just... So, they're super close. Yeah. And everything that's down there, that little highway that yeah. they're on, yeah. is a place like theirs. Five to ten acres with a house on it. Yeah. Beautiful. Somebody's hunting property. Yeah. And they want to fucking buy all that shit up. No, oh, yeah. And turn it into... Residential. Little boxes on the hillside mm-hmm. full of ticky-tacky. Yep. And they all look just the same. They all look just the fucking same. I know, man. I know. And I told I told, I told him, that's the reason why they fucking showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, in tell, order tell to enforce us. hard out there We're as they do move this. out. Yep. 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 Because to to keep you to fucking keep you down. Yep. Hope you're listening, Mayor Dan. The place has gone to shit. Mm-hmm. Every time I go to gas stations up here, there's black people in them. Rap snacks. Right. <laughs> What's going on, Mayor Dan? We talked about this. Uh now, if he had only implemented back across the bridge, think of the think of the beautiful place St. Charles would be. It could have been different. No, I take I take um, oh, okay, I <laughs> I, t- I take the court all the time, I, <laughs> as you do. You can't imagine who's fucking walking in there these days. I'm telling you, man, it's you know, you should buy that you were talking about. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I I think you should give a lot of thought to as I have. I'm not saying anything, you know. Give a lot of thought to what that looks like. Maybe even go so because you can do it in like one day places and do the whole class. You don't even have to submit for the card. Mm-hmm. You know, like even if you didn't pass or whatever, but you could do the class just to understand because there's a, there's a lot of nuance to it and and stand your ground and like wh- when is it appropriate when is not because you could get you get charged with brandishing a weapon. You know, in certain situ- situations. But, I, I I would I would do it tomorrow. Yeah, if I did not have to go into debt to do it. Mm. That's a very good reason. Though. I would have to charge it. I don't. Uh, have, I don't have the full. I. I don't have the liquid assets. <laughs> That's uh, there's the the Wall Street way of putting it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. To to make the purchase. Yeah. That's fair. So that's fair. I, maybe soon, but once I do have those assets, yeah, I, I do hope to make the purchase. But yeah, that aside, um, yeah, have you tried asking him how many bags of rice he wants? <laughs> I'm just you know I yeah. You know. Hey, we're doing that. With, uh, dude, we traded an extinct could tomato I put, plant. Could I put it on layaway? I tra- Yeah, exactly. We, we we traded an extinct 
tomato plant for two chickens. <laughs> that's, a, that's what life's getting like out here, bro. Don't trust the Jew system. But you go grow some extinct tomato plants, you never know what you might get for it. <laughs> I got two chickens that are laying eggs right now, and they're fertilized. I'm just saying. That means more chickens. Level up, bros. <laughs> Aaron keeps looking at his 401k. I'm like, what a good is idea. There's numbers on the screen, man. I'm I'm filthy rich in chickens. He, I, he doesn't understand that. <laughs> you're you're stoned. You don't say. I do say. So am I. You guys gonna say? Now, those gummies will be smacking you on your ass here in a minute if they're not already. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, <laughs> smoke weed every day. So I'm just gonna do one chapter on this one. It'll start at the beginning. It'll be Canacast. So. <laughs> We did the, the, the dinner. I did course one. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah, what'd um, you do? Damn it. So uh, I did a salad. Okay. Nice. You, Every, you're excellent at salads. Everything on the plate. You excel at salads. Was from Lucky Dog Farm. Nice. With the exception of a couple ingredients that I used to make the vinaigrette. Spices kind of. Yeah. Um, so I took their romaine, which they do beautiful romaine. Yeah. Purple and green. Beautiful. Um, I cut some up today. Mm-hmm. I've had it for three weeks. Nice. It had just started to brown. Yeah. After three weeks. Yeah. Like I'm getting it. Like he's pulling it out of the ground for you. The afternoon before he delivers it to me. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, that's the best stuff. So, so I get it a couple days before the dinner. I cut it in half. And I have this. Um, oh, cast- you, you're past the dinner and your brother's wedding. You, you got to come over for a Sunday fire. I know I do. See the whole I thing know. yourself. I uh, I have this cast iron grill. Mm. It's this big strip of cast iron, but it has like grill grill marks on it. Mm-hmm. So each I cut each romaine, sorry, in half. <laughs> yeah, and then grilled it on that in some olive oil. Okay, for like thirty seconds. To put grill marks on it and kind of wilt it. Yeah. Basically to to start to break down yeah. the romaine. Yeah. And then I put it in the refrigerator for three hours, four okay. hours. Okay. Pulled it out. And then put it on a giant ice bag, ice bath with the rest of my ingredients. Took it to uh stone soup. Um everybody had met out on the farm earlier. About about half the people we had um, to do, like, past apps and a tour of the farm. Yeah. I did gluten-free sourdough with a duck liver pate mm. and variations of strawberry, um, which people liked. I had to pay 100 bucks to get two people to go out there to serve it for me <laughs> so I could arrive early to do the first course. Ended up, we were 20 minutes late starting the whole thing. Mm. So, anyway. Yeah, and then so I did a salad, the, the charred romaine, um, honey lemon vinaigrette over the top, peas, uh, radish, and then I, I candied and dehydrated carrot. Okay. For like a crouton yeah. sort of thing. Interesting. And then I took some of their eggs they had, took the yolks, cured the yolks, so it's like this hard, almost like Parmesan consistency right. on the yolks, and then shaved that over the top. Interesting. And yeah, people liked it. Yeah. Very well done. And then second course was... Did you get to eat all the other courses? I, I got to taste various elements of the other courses. That's fair. Because just like it, it normal chef shit, shit is like you're not tasting the whole dish you're tasting elements of the dish yeah as you're preparing it yeah and then you know at the end okay you don't have to taste the dish Mm -hmm. because you know yeah anyway so matt from the westchester in chesterfield did course two um he did i think variations of vegetables Mm. um clayton my bro yeah. from Tompkins, he did pork belly. Very nice. Which was my favorite thing. Yeah. Like he had a ton left over and that, that tray, cause he had me cut. The, yeah. He was frying the pork belly. 
and would have me cut. Yeah. And that was probably my favorite part of it is because is that it was me, Phil, and Clayton back in the kitchen. Nice. And when I did my course, like I was literally just handing them Salad. an ingredient and a tool. Yeah. And turning back to what I was doing. And they did exactly what I wanted them to do on the dish without me giving them any instruction. And yeah. first course, my salad dish, it was me, Clayton, and Phil all pushing it out. Yeah. And we did it in like six, seven minutes. Very nice. Just back in this fucking saddle with your boys. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was a fun time. I, I really enjoyed myself. Um, yeah. Clayton did course three pork belly. I was, I cut up all the pieces he did, which is like twice as much as he actually needed. <laughs> And that pork belly, it, it, that tray just kept getting passed around the kitchen and everybody <laughs> eating two or three slices because it was so fucking good. Yeah. Oh, man, that sounds good. Uh, Chef Carl from Stone Soup did course four. He did uh, poussin, which is young chicken. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> Phil did course five. My kids, I told my kids about Balut. <laughs> Are you familiar with Balut? Mm-mm. <laughs> it's a fertilized chicken egg or i believe it's a chicken egg um i believe it's filipino but it's it has a fully developed yes, bird in it yes yes i know yes that. and they bury it and mm -hmm. it ferments or whatever and then you eat it out of the egg and so on and so forth i told my kids about balut and <laughs> i made the mistake of doing that and they bring it up all the time when i talk about eggs like at, at generally at a meal and my wife gets, she's like, stop, I'm going to be sick <laughs> because they're talking about Balut. The first person to tell me about Balut was Dano. That makes sense. Yeah. He's Filipino. Yeah. He, he has told this. He has, has he eaten Balut? No, he, yes. He has told us about Balut. Has he on the show? No, not on the show, but like, but like Gingham's conversation. When we were drunk or something. <laughs> Applebee's ten years ago, fifteen yeah. years ago. He yes. probably has. He probably has. Uh huh. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. He he's always talking about some Filipino he said, bullshit. He said that it was, it smelled like death. <laughs> that seems. I, and I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry, <laughs> because apparently it really grosses her out. Um, yeah. And so my kids bring it up all the time. I told him the other day. I was like, my favorite food in the world is eggs. Yeah. It 100 percent is. They're so versatile. We eat so many eggs. The other the other day, uh, kids were bitching about dinner, and I took I took some duck eggs, and I fried them, and I put them on uh, it, an everything bagel, with a little bit of um, pepper jack cheese, and bacon, and a little bit of just a little bit of mayo to kind of lube it, the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. Kids loved it, man. Dad's famous duck egg sandwiches. That's what we had. <laughs> <laughs> we eat a lot of eggs, and I love egg. Eggs are good. In Eggs any good. form. I actually mentioned, I mentioned to him the other day, the first time, the concept of eating it raw. Well, I mentioned, I, I, I think it's said in conversation or something. I said, oh, like a raw egg or whatever. And they were like, what is a raw egg, dad? And I was like, that's an egg that's uncooked. And they were like, what? And I was like, yeah, just like a completely, you know, when it's liquid. And I was like, people drink them. And they were like, people drink eggs? <laughs> and I was like, Yeah. Gross people do it when it comes to eggnog, and <laughs> real men do it when it's, when they're raw. So I think I'm gonna, I might have to eat a raw egg in front of my kids. You should. I I know I should eat like three. I power know. Move. It would really yeah cement my. Mm, uh, you know you know you need to flex. masculinity. I, I you need to flex on your kids. Yeah. Every once in a while, it whether needs to happen. Whether you're a mom or a dad. Yeah. <laughs> you need to flex on your children and let them know, hey. Listen, I, I know more than you. I'm better than you. You are only alive because of my good graces. <laughs> you need to you need to to let that message <laughs> nonverbally be known that from time to time. If yeah. I didn't care about you, you would be dead. <laughs> yeah. It okay. puts it, it puts the child in their place. Yeah. On the hierarchy. It cements the dynamics. It lets them know, okay, yeah. no, someone else is in charge. Mm -hmm. I, do it, I do it to my wife quite a bit. But <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sometimes you just, I mean, like, it, it's the same concept. You just have to let her know 
in a nonverbal way that this is. But I texted you about it the other night. We don't need to get into it. But uh, uh, yeah, okay. You remember what I said? Yeah. Yeah. It just sometimes it's necessary. A little manipulation is not always bad. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> so Lucky Dog Farm, success. Yeah. Great. Great dinner. Every, yeah. It, Many it, accolades. It was fantastic. Much it was, fun. It was fantastic. And then you went to a wedding. Yeah. My brother's wedding <laughs> three days ago. Bigly time. Should I read what you said to me? No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we had been, uh, they had been planning this wedding for um, several months, mm. four or five months. And they decided as you do. on the rack house as their, to do their reception. Which you told me about that. Yeah, it's the first time we've done a Sunday evening reception, mm-hmm. um, and they it was it ended up being the perfect fit. It was exactly what they they needed for their reception. Um, wedding was like maybe forty forty five people. Oh, nice um, man! Reception, I counted thirty seven. That, that sounds awesome. So, uh, yeah, we had. Um, I didn't, but. A couple of people. Again, Sam is the only one listening. <laughs> Several people tried to talk him out of it. It's just blacks shooting shooting each other. Oh, okay. Yeah. Didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Do you not hear the helicopter, too? Is that what that is? Yeah. I think you might be right. Yeah. You 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 check the police scanner. I'm gonna keep. No, I was gonna look at. Uh, so I have I have this app. You gotta get this app, bro. No. Anytime you see anything in the sky, I pull up FlightAware and I I could just I see right where it is. No, that's a helicopter. That's a police helicopter going on on overhead. St. Charles, it's fantastic. Anyway, so full backstory: my brother, my youngest brother, uh, marrying somebody who's been in a relationship with for about three years, um, who is, uh, non-binary, um, not trans, but just non-binary, whatever that means, them, are they, them, Mm. they wore slacks, a flowery, like Hawaiian almost shirt and a vest to get married in. Did she? Did they? My brother. I have to. I can't. I can't not, man. I have to. It, it fucking kills me, but I have to. Really? Okay. My brother wore wow. traditional like wedding garb without a jacket. Mm. Tie, vest. Yeah. The bridesmaids wore traditional. I'm sorry. I... I I misspoke. Not the bridesmaids. There were no bridesmaids. Uh huh. They were friends of honor. Is that? Are you being serious? Yes. <sighs> okay. It the what would you call it? The bridal group. The the bridal party. The bridal party. Yeah. It was. It was the friends of honor. Gay. Can I title the episode that at least? No. Oh, you're killing me here, man. So. (laughs) You and I are friends of honor, though. We are honorable (laughs) friends. There's a difference. So there were three um, feminine presenting persons in the Friends of Honor who are all wearing, like, traditional bridal Dress. Blue flower, flowery dresses. There was, and and so there was a service um, at the at, a, at McNair Park. It was a great service. Beautiful. Got to talk to my brother beforehand. Who did the wedding? Um, A friend of theirs mm. who is ordained. A strong black woman. Um, okay. Married to a, a, a white male redditor. 
So how would so you? So, but you had edibles for this, right? Tell me you were I did, like I did. <laughs> I did. I had about ten milligrams in me. Okay, good. I'm just because uh, thirty thirty yikes, minutes, man. Thirty minutes before the ceremony, I, I put about ten milligrams in me. <laughs> and I had also had a rum and coke about an hour beforehand. Okay, yeah, because man, oh man, that's um, well. But it's my brother. I love him, and yeah, he's happy of with it. This is, it's it's the, the it is the decision he is making. Go, you know the you know the thing. All right, come on, fuck <laughs> off. Go, you know the you know the thing. Uh, his clips are getting better and better too. I don't know if you've seen some of the no, ones it, going it, around. It, it's true. It's true. Um. But yeah, so ceremony was very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, did did pictures afterwards. I left first mm-hmm. uh, to go do do the food and stuff. Um, yeah, so it was real weird because a lot they, of alphabet people. Well, there were a ton of alphabet people. Yeah, and all. If if someone wasn't alphabet, yeah, they were Reddit, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then my family, yeah, yeah. Um, they arrived at the rack house. So, if you don't mind me asking, like, how did he? So how <laughs> how did he fall into such bad company? <laughs> like, I don't want to be. He, he worked at Walmart, and just but and so did I. But okay, all he, right. He, I mean, he worked in Walmart in like. 2018 till okay. now anyway all right so yeah <laughs> I mean, the ceremony went 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 fine um couldn't really hear her mm-hmm. couldn't really hear them <laughs> excuse me okay. i do mean to be sincere but i'm not joking when I, I do mean to be sincere yeah even though i disagree with it but it, it's not because i agree with it uh-huh. it's, it's out of respect for my brother that's fair. Okay. So that's where that is. I, I okay. So um yeah. Good ceremony. I left, went to go get food started, and I ended up like kind of greeting the people as they were coming into the rack house and pointing them back to the patio. Yeah. And then it evolved into me being wedding planner. <laughs> <laughs> as it so often does. Because then it was like, oh, here's the this guy at the door. He knows things. Who seems to know all the things. <laughs> He's telling us what to do. Yeah. Problem solved. Problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And He's a domineering white man. I mean, you know, the alphabets aren't going to push back. So here's what happened. <laughs> the friends of honor. The friends of honor <laughs> who identify as male. They sound like a band. The Friends of Honor. The Friends of Honor who identify like a bad Christian band. Who identify <laughs> as male. My brother Ryan, Joel, and Sam. Uh-huh. Arrived early. Uh-huh. Five, fifteen ish. And went to go hang with the rest of the family. Mm-hmm. So when the time came. I'll I'll, I'll skip back. <laughs> Circle back. The cake. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about the cake. Saturday, my brother Joseph texts me and he's like, hey, we're going to make the cake today. Could we drop it off tonight and leave it in your refrigerator? Sure. 100%. Let's do it. He dropped it off after I left. My sous chef sent me a picture of the cake (laughs) at like 940 (laughs) on Saturday night. Don't tell me. (laughs) You going to show me the picture? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because I am 100% neutral on this cake. <laughs> um, I 100% agree that whomever made that cake, <laughs> they did their very best. I am also 100% <laughs> of the, the belief that it was their first time Making a cake. <laughs> so my sister Sarah. That's atrocious. I I mean I that's just my okay, sister Sarah fine. and um my sister Jean, when they got there, they got there real early. 
I immediately took them to the walk-in and showed them that cake. Because Sarah is a chef. It, is there a nice way to say it? It was a cake. Uh, it was. I mean, it's what I saw a picture of. People ate it and seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> But it could have been better. Um, by many leaps and bounds. So, so <laughs> lots of room for improvement is the good way to put that. That's how you do it's a, the woke way to do it. Guests are arriving. A lot of room at, for improvement. Guests are arriving at the rack house. I'm pointing them where to go. Uh, I'm helping to run drinks. Uh huh. This whole time, um, the grooms, the. Male identifying. <laughs> what is it? Friends of the what? Friends of honor. Friends of honor. The male identifying friends of honor of my brothers were hanging with my family. Mm. The female identifying friends of honor were in the parking lot. Uh huh. Talking to other letter people. <laughs> the bride and the. Newly wed couple arrive. Mm. They come in. I go get the male identifying friends of honor from the patio. I meet them at the door, and I say, "Because uh, they had no, they had no plan." Uh huh. Our entrance. Yeah. Like, when do we start telling guests this? They had no plan. Yeah. That can happen at weddings. So I ended up. At at the begin at like when they all came in, I said, "Okay, friends of honor, <laughs> we're going to pair you up." Or, or I said, "Would you like me to like introduce you?" Right, which is typical at a wedding. Yeah, at a reception. Yeah, when the wedding party arrives. Yeah, they are introduced. Yeah, and they're like, "Well, I don't know." I was like, "It's totally your call." Right, we don't have to. But if you would like me to, we can do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so I got the names of all the, I said, I said, well, <laughs> I didn't actually say this. I said, we could, the male identif- identifying friends of honor could <laughs> walk in with the female identifying friends of honor. Right. Anyway, that's what happened. And I ended up announcing them. Yeah. Then I ended up announcing like, hey, here's where, when we're going to do food. Everybody. Go grab a drink, mix and mingle. Food will be served in 15 minutes. Right. So you end up emceeing the thing. Hey, we're about to cut the cake. Everybody gather around if you want to get pictures and instructing, like, my brother and stuff. I'm like, okay, here's stand here, do this. Yeah. And it was, like, 30, 40 minutes after the cake was served that I finally got to, like, stop. And eat, a, eat something. To... Like, do something. Yeah. Like, start drinking. <laughs> So I did with a vengeance. <laughs> did you? I ended up downing four Manhattans. Now, GTST does not condone the behavior described here. <laughs> and then it's like 830. We're supposed to be dancing, but no one is dancing. Right. Is there music? There is. There is. Yeah. So I went to the bar and I'm like, give me 10 shots <laughs> of whatever. <laughs> So the bartender, he's like, makes like 10 Ten lemon shot. drops. Yeah. And I took him out there to where the majority, the most people were standing around. I'm like, hey, free shots. Who wants to do a shot? Let's do a shot. Yay, <laughs> Joseph and Jay. <laughs> and then people started like moving, dancing, like yeah. getting into it. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you hypnotize these people? <laughs> and then things kind of started winding down. Most of the people left. Um most of my family had left except for me and a couple of my brothers. My mom left. It was basically my brothers, the officiant and her redditor <laughs> and like <laughs> the friends of honor. Yeah. Like one or two other people. So I, of course, had come prepared, <laughs> have a joint in my pack of cigarettes. Indeed. And how, I was, how I, dare you? I was like, Joseph, let's go smoke, man. Of weed? Yeah. I was like, let's go smoke. He's like, um, I'm good. I'm good. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go smoke. 
<laughs> if you don't want to, that's fine. And I told my other brothers. Does, he doesn't, does he? No. And I told my other brothers, I'm like, yeah, hey, you guys want to go smoke? Go smoke. They were like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. My brother Joel. Was, they don't want to turn out like you, to be fair. Yeah. My brother Joel was <laughs> like, yeah, I would, but uh, man, nah, no. No. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, all right. I'm going to go smoke. Yeah. So I go to the patio next door. Our, our banquet patio. Because we were on the main patio for the main party. And I sit down. And I put my lighter up to the joint. Mm. The door opens. And here comes the female identifying friends of honor. <laughs> plus one other female who was like taking pictures. Mm. And they're like, hey, could we get in on it? Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna sit, yeah, I'm gonna sit down. Let's get, us, let's get a circle going. Right. And then my brother Joel came in and he's like, hey, man, I just want one puff. And he just took one puff and left. <laughs> While he was standing baked, there. Baked. Completely baked yeah. he was. He had had four Manhattans as well. Mm, never a good idea. Never a good idea. So. I've been in those shoes. That's, a, that's not. That's a tell you. Uh, that's not. So then it comes <laughs> about 20 minutes of the most horrific. <laughs> there have been telegram channels that have opened my eyes. <laughs> yeah. To the nature of the female identifying persons. Yeah. But never it it at that far up close. Yeah. I felt like Richard Attenborough <laughs> like in a nature documentary. <laughs> For pure science, yeah. Yes. You just Yeah, just like observing. Yeah. Just the liberal female will do anything she can to justify the fact she can't find a mate <laughs> due to her own poor choices. <laughs> she, watch as she dyes her hair blue. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. No. So we smoke and we're passing it. And, and they, one of them was uh, a roommate with Joseph and Jay mm. who was like, well, I, can, I have to kill some time. I can't go home right away because they're going to go home. Mm. Like, you know, consummate the thing. You know, yeah. It was, it was literal sex jokes from like 23, 24, 25 year old women when they're stoned. <sighs> And then I'm glad I don't smoke with any 23, 24, 25 year old women. And then, and then <laughs> one of them say, I'd probably ate it. One of them said, Oh, you'll have to stay here an extra three seconds. Mm. And I looked at him like, Bitch, that's my brother. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm talking about him like that. And they're all like, Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Right. And they were like, A male checked them. Mm. And you, you know? also, you, but you also hit him from the, from the perfect angle. Cause like, you, you, you know, it's like a victimhood mentality. Like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. don't, don't pick on the, you know, somebody. Well, no, don't shame people. Yeah, exactly. Is 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 kind of what it was. Yeah. And then you know, it slipped through the cracks. That's good, man. Real they, solid. They, on start, your part. they started talking about like sex stuff. Yeah. And about like, oh, yeah, our two gay friends, we rent, had rent, my, me and my boyfriend had rented a, a hotel, and my two gay friends banged in our bathroom, and then my boyfriend joined them. And like, yeah. And then like another one talking about like how she has a mommy fetish of like being a mommy and like how they're all like non, all, all, all four of them non-binary. Of course. Of okay. course. Yeah. Two of them lesbian identifying non-binary. Okay. One male attracted non-binary and one ambiguous on Baron Air. And she, it was her who had like the mommy fetish mm. of like being the mommy. That being said, she had ginormous mommy milk. <laughs> okay. Don't Question be rude. Time. And she was the first female identifying person. This is hard. <laughs> this is so fucking hard for me right now, you guys. I'm really struggling to like be gender neutral. Because it's stupid. I hope you understand it's part of the bit of the story. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but she's the first female identifying person I've ever said or I've ever heard say mommy milkers or milkers. She said my fantastic milkers. Really? 
That I, phrase. Yes. I, 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 everybody loves mommy milkers. Interesting. Hmm. All I had to do <laughs> was for them to overhear me saying drugs and their sex life was an open fucking book to me. Yeah. And not even like hard drugs. <laughs> and and but not even like like not even like with no with no goading. It was like they wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Well they they have to talk they they, they need to do that because it's 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 all a part of the validation ritual. I think so. I think yeah, I like think you're you, uh, you're you're onto it right there. You a hundred percent have to go through this ritual of getting people to validate something that doesn't exist in order for it to exist. It's, uh, it's or, it, essentially it's black magic or well or, <laughs> or accepting or accepting your morals like like you need we're, and we're coming up on pride month so this is perfectly apropos speaking of, have you seen the monkey box news uh, yes i have okay floyd bola vax box what's your favorite one is that the <laughs> champades i like champades champades is not bad <laughs> the degenerate behavior uh -huh. needs to needs to be celebrated Right and accept it in order to validate it. The in whole order thing. to validate yes. it, yes, because it is such a crime against nature. Yes, it's a validation ritual, and it goes against everything that that is natural. Yes, so yes, it is a val. So yes, these these non-binary female presenting persons needed <laughs> to talk about their sexuality. Yeah, in order to have it validated, and and they they all know each other. Mm -hmm. They're all friends. Yeah, I'm the only stranger. Yeah. But yet they're willing to broach these topics in front of me. A complete stranger. To make to make sure yeah. that everyone is validated by that yeah. uh, there was no pushback by anybody. Yeah. It, it's a ritual in order to validate the behavior. No, hundred percent, man. It's it's and and people don't people don't see this stuff for what it is, but the, 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 that's exactly how these things work. And 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 you know, like that document I sent you or that interview. Uh, that I sent you out of the clear, clear blue. And I thought about sending it and then some commentary or, you know, oh, I found this interesting or whatever. And then I was like, no, that's the kind of thing where you just, you know, I can, you and I are on the level where it's like, I just send you the link. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just be blessed with that brother. <laughs> I pretty much read the whole thing. <laughs> I did too. And it, it, it was very interesting stuff. It is. Yeah. Um, there were some important points that like I disagreed with or whatever. Well, no, that I, like I skimmed. Yeah. Yeah, same here. But still, it it was it was a solid, solid it, 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 it was an interesting read. Yeah. And uh yeah, monkey pox and pride month and everything else. So it's you know, who knows? Who knows what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. The the pox does seem to be a gay disease though. It does. So it And the media is telling us it's not, so we know that it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that's how, you know, <laughs> That's how you have to do things here in clown world. Well, I personally, I would like to see the gay community mm -hmm. and the the alphabet people communities mm -hmm. uh, shut down any and all events for Pride Month mm -hmm. to go into lockdown. We know it is spread by yes. letter people, yes, by alphabet people. Mm -hmm. So they shouldn't they sh shouldn't leave their houses. <laughs> they need to wear masks. Yeah, they need to social distance. Mm -hmm. In Six to eight months, they need to get a vaccine, mm -hmm. you know? Um, well, you know, Fauci has history with AIDS and the gays. You don't say. Yeah. No. Yeah, I knew that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like just like this next one coming up. All seems to be mixed in with faggots and AIDS. Have you noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 like butt sex is bad for you or something. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Seems like it is. But yeah, so stay away from the stay away from the gay sex, kids, please. I had a good. We've time. said it for years on this program. I had a good time uh, <laughs> over the weekend with the Alphabet people. Mm. My brother's wedding was good. Uh, they enjoyed themselves. Everything was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was a good time, and um, many blessings on both of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was interesting a window into like the real community. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was just. It yeah. was now I'll I'll probably end up cutting this out, but dude, and, and in particular, like that concept I mentioned earlier, like that validation ritual. 
you know it's just which i think is um uh, yeah that's a that's a very good point mm-hmm. it is it is a ritual to um signal mm-hmm. that you're one of them mm-hmm. and okay with the sin of sodomy mhm mhm well, there you have it. Hour twenty two in. <laughs> Are we? Yeah. Yeah. At least good. on the recording. Uh yeah, man. I don't I mean you know. I'm trying to think of anything else that's that's happened. It's all that. very interesting in light of that article I sent you though. Yeah. Yeah. Very a lot of uh, hmm. 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 We're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, I sent Chris the same article. I sent Chris the same article. And, you know, we kind of talked about the same thing. And I was like, yeah, well, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> it's not looking good. It's not looking good. But I got a lot of chickens, though. I'm a wealthy poultry farmer. I think <laughs> that that the one take you can take away from it, that article you sent, is, mm-hmm. is perseverance of the saints. Yes. Yes. Because, but we really, you, but you know, we really. I mean, there's no time for screwing around. If if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, like we can't. This is not cancel the Netflix because you you need to learn how yeah. to battle this. Yeah, I'm I'm serious. But I've but, been thinking about this a lot, and that's 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 a real problem because everybody I know would be like, oh yeah, I totally agree. You know, I'm, you know, just same old garbage. I mean, yeah. And it's like now now like you need to. <laughs> There's war on, and you're in it. <laughs> and when I, when I say perseverance but, of the saints, what that means is like true believers believing mm-hmm. and persisting in the world, no matter how bad the world gets. Yes, yeah. And that is a a, a very good trait to have as a person. Is no matter, and I I, I talked to someone about this today. I, earlier earlier, I mentioned it on the podcast an hour ago is no, it doesn't matter how bad the world is. You still keep doing the right thing. Yeah. Yes. Everything may becoming corrupted and the right thing you're doing today may become corrupted tomorrow. Yeah. But it, that does should not stop you from still doing the right thing. Well, and I, I I mean, broader than the right thing though, like the spiritual warfare is, is it's a very real component here. Yeah. And I think the Western Church, as I've said before, like I think the Western Church has been despiritualized. <laughs> like they've been given this sort of false sense of, you know, God wants you to have a Hummer kind of thing, and and it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> look at what Mark. Look at in the Gospel of Mark before Jesus gets out of here. Right? We have we have the 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 Gospels. Every one of them tells the story of the Ascension. Look mm-hmm. at the one in Mark. As a matter of fact, read the whole book of Mark. Like all Jesus did <laughs> in the book of Mark was walk around and just like deal with demons. I don't know if you understand that, you know, and that's what he said. That's what he said when he left in Mark too. He noted, he's like, Hey, you know, these are the things that you're going to be about. Yeah. Casting out devils. And, you know, and then he gives this bizarre list that nobody in the West, you know, you know we don't, Oh, you know, we take communion. Like that's, you know what I mean? Like we, that's as far as we go. And we don't, we don't think there's a spiritual realm and you, you know, Right on top of ours. Right on top of ours. Interacting with. Interacting with ours. You know, but, but people should read a lot more Frank Peretti. That's how <laughs> we get out of this mess. If we if we had a lot more folks reading, what is it? Piercing the dark, dark, the Darkness series, I guess. Piercing the Darkness and This Present Darkness. I should read those books again, man. Dude. You read those books? You read I, those ha- books? I have not, no. Dude. I'm going to order you a copy of the Darkness series. Oh, God. It's, Don't make me do that. It's so good, dude. It's so good. It's so good. All right. It's fantastic. Speaking of spiritual battles. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we were at um, my brother's bachelor party a couple weeks ago. <laughs> okay. Okay. At night playing poker and stuff. And I was talking to one of my brothers, and I was like, yeah, I've really been feeling convicted lately about being fat. Really? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Just because... Like I, now that I'm getting older, like almost forty, like <laughs> getting up the stairs, mm. you know, it, it everything just hurts more at yeah. the end of the day. And I'm like, uh, you know, I, I I I I have to do it, man. But I, 
Cigarettes will improve so much of that if you can get off of those. Cigarettes? Yes. Oh, I know. I know. I alcohol, mean, it, it alcohol just, too. Yeah, yeah, that too. But but the, the cigarettes, like they, you know, doctors can do like scans of your foot and be like, oh, so you're a smoker. Like that's, I mean, that stuff yeah. is. Yeah. That aside. Anyways, so yeah, no. This past week, it's been, it's been eight days since I've had a carb. Mm. Like uh, any it, bread. Anything like that. I've had one serving of starch, which was some mashed potatoes at my brother's wedding. But how are your poops? We'll get to that. <laughs> For eight straight days, I've taken home some protein and some veg from work. Yeah. Clean and clean animal protein? Chicken or beef. Yeah. And Good. then eaten some animal protein, usually like I'll eat like five or six pieces of bacon. Yeah. Or like four eggs. Yeah. Or I like a, a beef patty for my lunch. Yeah. And that's it. That's yeah. it. Nothing else with it. No sauce. Yeah. No, just no. Just, and in the extras. Just down the hatch. Some salt, pepper, down the hatch. Yeah. And then I'll take. That's the, what I've started doing now that it's warmer now. I'll take the same equivalent of like either chicken or beef mm-hmm. on top of some veg in a to-go box. Mm-hmm. Like a cup and a half, two cups of veg. Yeah. And then I've been eating that. Good, man. Like every day. Like for a week solid. Yeah. How do you feel, dude? My yeah. energy levels are twice what they were probably a week ago. Yeah, yeah. You stop eating the devil's poison and get it slightly clean, even. My yeah. my poops, <laughs> dude. Matt's poops. There we go. There, so <laughs> I'm very. I used to be very gassy at work. <laughs> do tell. <laughs> I farted today. Like a little, uh huh. And I was like, "Oh shit, damn!" When was the last time I farted? <laughs> and I, I, I stood Couldn't there. Remember. I stood there for like two minutes trying to think about the last time I farted, and it was like, "It's been three, or four. Normally, I have like ten solid farts between the hours of like ten a.m. and two p.m. every day. <laughs> Dude, that's not. Oh my! What are what have you? What have you cut? Have you been? You've been. You've been getting the munchies at night kind of thing lately? No, or? no. Well, what are you eating? What were you eating that was that bad for you? Chips. Just Well, that's what I mean, though. Like Pizza. It, so Taco Bell. Munchies. Chili. Yeah. The garbage munchies. This shit will kill you, man. Peanut butter. It really will. Yeah. You, you still have some soft gels? I'll send you some soft gels, too, because that'll help you. I have, like, one. Okay. That I, keep, I keep them at work because okay. they help with, like, if I'm if my, my knees yeah. or foot is hurting. Yeah, so I'll pop one. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some more. But yeah, no. So I've been eating this way. Just, I'm seriously just meat and veg for a week solid. Yeah, water, Red Bull, Coke Zero. Yeah, and alcohol and rum. <laughs> yeah, for a week solid. My poops are are so clean. <laughs> like there's no pressure, and it's just like straight out. Boop 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 boop. I barely even feel it. Yeah, and wow. They, they float. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at him like, look at you guys. Look how easy it was. Yeah. You're like a giant rabbit now. Just... <laughs> but yeah, so I, 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 I don't feel it yet. Yeah. But I know I probably dropped at least five pounds the past week. Yeah. Um, but I, I, dude, I feel so much better. Yeah. Well, no, because so two people asked me, uh, or like three people in the last week, you know, people that I see semi regularly, like her sister, my sister, the you know, every 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 seven eight days I see them. Uh, two two people asked me for sure, maybe three, I can't remember if I if I've lost weight, and I was mm-hmm. like, I'm probably I don't really get on the scale. And it's true, I don't. Um, because but my diet has really changed now that it's gotten hot. Like I just don't want to like go ham on stuff when it's hot. Yeah. You know, so even if she makes like a go ham type meal or, you know, she got some pizzas from Aldi's or something, I just, you know, I eat my portion and, and I'm good. Yeah. And, and I've been skipping dinner. Like I've been making the middle meal, my, my main meal or the one where I eat the most, because then it, it seems like more of it is burnt off as opposed to eating a big dinner and then going to bed. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And I, and I, and so many eggs, bro. <laughs> The raw you eat them, the better they are for him. And it it it's just amazing, like the like 
meat and veg and that's it like i have twice the energy i don't ache as much at the end of the day and my poops my poops are just so good <laughs> effortless yeah graceful poops <laughs> yeah yeah i i i hope i, I i'm going to try and stick to this diet for for a while yeah so good for you man it's awesome yeah um you think about those cigarettes, man. I've been telling you for years. I know. I mean, it's it's so easy. Just get something. They're up, they're up next. They're up next. All right. Yeah. Because I know I know alcohol is the last one, and I understand that, and that's fine. You will have to kick it to be a lot on my compound. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> we don't. No alcohol. No, only for medicinal purposes. What you... if I have a medicinal license? <laughs> All the herb you can smoke. I'm just saying. Yeah. When, we have some hard rules on things. We have no gays either. I mean, it's, you know. Can I come back to the compound drunk <laughs> after being at the local bar? Uh, You know, I, we'll discuss it. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Maybe we can do a weekend pass kind of thing. Who knows? <laughs> all no, right. I, I refer to it all the time. Like when I talk about wanting to move and different things like that, I call it a compound. And and one of my friends is like, don't, come on. And I'm like, why? It is. Look at the way this shit's going. I'm like, what do you think is going to happen? It's the thing I keep telling people about the food supply. I'm like, it's it's not that, you know, mass starvation. That's a component eventually. Mm -hmm. But, and I, I used this analogy with a friend. I said, I said, eight out of 10 homes in the West, particularly the United States, if I went to the door, committed an armed robbery for their food, do you know what I would find? I would find a week's worth of food for however many people live there that all expires within eight months. Yeah. That's what you'd find in every home in America. Yeah. Right. But for the 2% of, of that, you know, group that would have a little extra or would have a garden or, you know, whatever. Th those are the anomalies to that. Maybe it's higher, but that's the problem. And in, in, in the cities, it's much higher, 10 out of 10 homes. Mm -hmm. And so... When that immediate food supply that we've all been addicted to, you know, not not just like the Wendy's and the Taco Bell, but the Aldi's and the Walmart on every corner, when those start having problems, that's when the switch is flipped. Because then everybody in America who eats a week out at most with their groceries, maybe two weeks, is screwed. Yeah. <laughs> like, majorly screwed. And that's... I'm sorry, but that is the city. That's what that is. Yeah. And the farther out you get, the closer you can eat to your food supply, you know, your personal food supply chain, the better off you are. Because in the cities, like I said, you're two weeks out from having a real problem. And a lot of other people around you who have real problems as well and might not be so nice about it, just so you know. <laughs> you know, sure the implication there is clear, but that, you know, that's when that's when shit's gonna get really hairy. So you're not wrong. Nah, have I ever been, man? <laughs> Once, but I think it was because you believed a woman. Well, you know, lessons learned. That's true. What are you gonna do? All right. Well, uh, donate and stuff. Um, bunch of people been signing up on Ebles. Um, good, good. Yeah, so, selling a lot of that, getting a lot of good response, a lot of five star reviews. People love it. People love it. It's great stuff. I, uh, the keeper sent me a message, a message on Instagram talking about how much her and Adam like my products. Really? Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. I was Actually, like, well, have him, have him talk about it for like 10 minutes on the next <laughs> show. <laughs> no, but yeah. He, um, he used a clip that I sent him. You told me that. Yeah. Past, yeah. Yeah. This past episode. It's the best um, podcast in the universe, man. Didn't, didn't mention me or. I feel or like the, the only good thing, podcasts but... these days are ones that are. Some in some fashion tangentially associated with no agenda and the podfather. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because look, he's even infected. I mean, like Greg Carwood. Farrell. Yeah. 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 Farrell's outside of that. But Dyer, he, he's Dyer. in his own kind of Dyer. Jay so, Dyer. Yeah, and he's on the ad train, man. He, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Well. I mean, he decided to Yeah. Go the, the 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 Jones route. So yeah, I haven't I haven't yeah that too. Um, I haven't listened a lot just because he um, 
Well, I think the only reason he's on Ramble. Alex Jones. He rambles. Yeah, yeah, he does some rambling. But he he that's kind of his shtick though, I think. But it it is, but he's got to tighten it up. But like, that orthodox like, bros, man, it just uh, No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, yeah, that too. It's pervasive. But uh I listened I guess the most interesting thing I listened to second half of show wise was that THC about stolen history. Mm-hmm. Did you listen to yeah, that? Yeah, it was a good one. It yeah. was real good. Me and Chris talked about that too. I was like, man, that shit is on fire, bro. Yeah, it was a good one. I mean, he he, he just mentioned a whole gamut of stuff. It was very interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But listen, donate, go buy some CBD. All the links will be in the description. Go buy some CBD or, or head by my Delta 8 if you, if you need something different. Uh, code GTST on both for the highest discount on Ebels. It's 33%, of course. And um, yeah, if you want to put a note in there on your order, We'll absolutely read it on the show. That's true. Or you can donate Bitcoin uh, for N words. It's a, it's a new economy we've got going on. <laughs> I couldn't believe we posted that. As I listened to that last week as we were recording, I was like, I was like, well, I can't cut out like the whole thing. So just okay, leave it in. Yeah, it's going up now. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. Thanks for listening, everybody out there on Audio Land. Please clap. Whatever you say, liberal. Okay. Okay. Liberal. Yeah, live. Whatever you say, liberal. Okay, okay, liberal. Yeah, live. Whatever you say, liberal. Okay, okay, liberal. Watch out for poisonous shoes. This has been a production of Tripod Broadcasting.